Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. You can see this is a different view on the world, and that's because I'm playing with a box, and it's the box that I made earlier. And you'll recognise this because we spent a lot of time assembling this. Now, the reason I assembled this before was because I was playing with Stuart Ashen's Jammer Super Gun, and we've got a wrestling board just behind me there, which you can't see, but you can see on the screen it's running, and it's running quite stably. And that's because actually we've already modified the hardware. So if you recall through the jammer process, we took off some chips, we reseated the chips, we adjusted some components, and it's looking quite stable. Now, had we at the time had our new box of tricks, this would have aided a lot in debugging this because the output of the video signal was a little bit too spicy, a bit too picante for the jammer's, uh, the jammer super gun the GBS board in, uh, specifically inside it that to handle the uh, signal. So what was happening is we were getting a strange rolling effect every now and then as it was basically freaking out, right? It was oversaturating, too much voltage, whatever, right? Couldn't handle it. With our new box of tricks, of course, all we need to do is just adjust the sync level here very sensitively because I need to, I need to modify this, by the way. Uh, and then that would have brought it into line and we go, okay, that's what it was. And we could just modify the board. So uh, to this end, we're going to have a little play with our box of tricks. And I'm just going to hook it up the same way I would have hooked it up while this thing was faulty and uh, how twiddling the knobs basically affects the picture. So first things first, I'm going to just disconnect the GBS board inside the super gun because, of course, we're going to be pulling out the wires. And it's using this particular connector, and you've, you might get these if you're jammer rig. So it does vary whether or not you're going to use these or something else that's connected, but that's what we've got. So just to show you in the corner of the screen, we've got our box of tricks. And this is the wires on the end of our box of tricks. And you can remember there's plenty there. So we the ones we're going to use today, basically, are the red, the green, the blue, the black, and the yellow. And those are the ones to do with video and we've got these two small yellow ones which have different connectors and these are audio amplifiers we're not using that if you recall our box of tricks has a built-in audio amplifier which is kind of means i'm almost got a whole super gun basically ready to go which is kind of cute and uh, what we're going to do is push these panel pins you can see i've put panel pins on the end of these connectors and that's because these panel pins really give us quite a nice fit in the ends of here so if you just poke those through like that you'll be able to attach all of your connectors. So you can see I've pushed all the panel pins into the connector and hooked up all of our test probes to the appropriate pin, color for color. So we've got the red, green, blue, the black on our side is ground, which goes to the black on the loom, and the yellow, which is sync on our side, goes to the white on the loom. So all that remains is that we plug in our box of tricks into the monitor. We're running and the output is going straight to the monitor. So we have our RGB knob. So just to show you what happens when we tiddle those. So I can actually remove out the red component by turning it all the way to the left or increase the saturation of the red component to be way too much red. And that goes for all the colors. So you've got the green there and you've got the blue. So you could oh, look at that. It almost now looks exactly how it would look if you were looking at it through one of the virtual boys. So that's virtual boy mode. Um, and you can just tweak these to whatever settings you like, really. Um, if you max them all out, you can see it can get a little bit oversaturated. So you just want to, you want them at all the same level, basically, um, according to what you're looking at. So sometimes if you're a telly that's biased a bit too red, especially if it's a CRT one, you can use those to sort of tweak it. And I'm going to show you though the main one though that we needed for this, and that's this pot here, which is a sink. Now mine is a very sensitive one because I'm using a hundred, uh, oh uh, sorry, a hundred kilo ohm uh, potentiometer here, so I might slap another hundred k across the uh, ends of that to sort of bring its range down because it's a bit too sensitive. But have a look to see what happens as I twist it. So I'm going to twist it slowly to the right. In fact, I'm going to look, slam it to the right. Doesn't seem to be doing much. And um, that's because it's basically now bringing this into the, the full full saturation. But as I turn it to the left, that's basically lowering what we are. There we go. And you can see there's no signal. So you want to tweak that up. So in the case where the, how the board was before, I would have just basically turned this knob till it started to work. And that would actually have been reducing the signal. And if we just keep going, you'll see there's a point where 
the GBS unit will lose that signal. Okay, there we go. Saw it there. And interestingly enough, that was somewhat similar. Not quite, but somewhat similar to the effect we were getting before when it wasn't working. However, it was a different, definitely a more pronounced effect. So that gives you that adjustment. So you can probably see as I twiddle the pot on the video sync how it affects the image slightly at that end of the range, but we're still keeping sync, which is kind of cool. But as I lower it, eventually it will start to panic. And there we go, it's panicked. But that's it really. So as it stands, um, very useful way of having your GBS unit in a box i mean it's quite robust you've still got all the same controls here and menu options as you would want if you need them still accessible and of course what you can do once you've done this the next stage is to get one of the aftermarket firmwares and use an esp module and you can really um, pimp these out so they become like a wi-fi enabled box which will give you loads of extra options on this so it's a really good base to start your hardware however in the meantime, I'm just happy that I get to play WrestleFest without the screen freaking out or flickering around. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And hopefully, if you've got a uh, somewhat similar issue, you build one of these uh, and go, go play uh, WrestleFest yourself. As ever, thanks for watching.